Hi, this is John Clements. Welcome to the UMass Video Fruit Advisor. Today's February 4th, 2011, and we're here at Tugas Farm in Northboro, Massachusetts. Uh, our second week of the pruning demos for the tall spindle. As you can see, we got a lot of snow here, um, but we're we got a small crowd, but that's good. They're the dedicated ones, and we're going to have Andre Tugas tell us a little bit about his take on the, the, the rules of pruning these tall spindle apple trees. So, Andre Tugas, go ahead. Well, uh, these are Honeycrisp on Nick 29, uh, planted in 2005, so they're six or seven years old now. Um, so we're into the heart of the, the pruning. Um, the, the first rule we're going to go through is limiting the tree height. Uh, as you can see behind me, there's a platform that we use to do this most of the time, but today, since these trees are so short, we can do it with our pruners. Um, we want to keep them about 90% of the row width, which is... Which, which is, is what, about 11 feet here? Yeah, this is 11 feet, so, so 10 to, 9 or 10 feet. Tree shouldn't be higher than about 10 feet. Yeah, so we're just going to make one cut. Cut to a weaker side shoot there. Yeah, exactly. mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the next step is we're going to make two to three uh, cuts, large cuts, um, taking br branches off the trunk um, to encourage new growth. Uh, and to prevent any tree, any branches from getting out of control, we make a bevel cut. The honey crisp will leave it a little bit longer than we would on other varieties because they don't have a tendency to regrow as easily. So you're going to take off. You're telling me we're going to take off one or two, maybe three of the biggest branches in the tree, yep. whichever the the one, two, or maybe three biggest branches on the tree, and they're usually about a quarter in diameter, or, or not quite that. But that, using a bevel cut, we're going to cut those off. So there's one cut. You're going to do a number two. Up here, we have one that's also growing strong compared to the to the branch we, or to the leader where it's coming out of. We have to be careful about not letting the branches get too big in the top of the tree. So sometimes those branches are a little smaller, but still they're getting big for the top. So those need to come out, right? Yes. So that's two cuts. So you're going to make a third? Are you good here? Uh, well, I'm assuming that there's one underneath the snow here, so <laughs> yeah. we'll leave that until the snow melts. Um, the, the third rule of pruning is to columnarize the branches. Uh, any large branch that's uh, forked. We're gonna we're gonna single those out and simplify the branch to allow more light into the tree. So we've got one single axis coming out. This one branch is a single axis all the way out to the end, pretty much. Yes. Rather rather than forking or wying, we, we, we get rid of those forks. And we don't want to confuse the fork with the fruiting dart like this here, because mm -hmm. this has a nice fruit bud on the end. We're gonna leave those fruiting darts mm -hmm. to fruit. So that's not much pruning, is that it? That's, that's about, about it. it on these tall spindle trees, on Very these Honeycrisp? Yeah. yeah. Maybe a little bit on the other side when we have a chance to get mm -hmm. back in here. Um, now, the, other, the only other thing is the guys from Nova Scotia are talking talk about, about the bud removal, bud removal mm -hmm. on the bottom of the branches to encourage, um, to discourage biennial bearing. Um, well, you encourage better growth into the tree. We want to see pencil size growth on these fruiting darts. So by removing these buds on the bottom of the branches, you're encouraging more growth, which in turn encourages uh, more fruiting, more steady, uh, less biennial fruit, uh, bearing. So you're doing a little fruit thinning fruit now, thinning basically, right now. is what you're doing. Yep. And yep. you know, this is uh, something you do on Honeycrisp to, have, to promote annual bearing, and they found this works pretty well in Nova Scotia. Yep. That's all. Okay. Any questions? Or are we good? Easy pruning. All right, thanks, thanks, Andre. So, Andre, uh, we did those honey crisps. These are uh, Matsus, Matsu. which is a more vigorous variety. Yep. But again, the tall spindle system. Can you quickly go over the the rules of pruning these? Because it doesn't change, even though these trees are a little more vigorous. You might just look at them a little differently. But go ahead. They're a little more vigorous, but they're still we're pruning the largest branches off the trees. We already made one cut here uh, to bring the bottom up a little bit. Although I'm not really sure where the ground is. It's so deep down here. <laughs> But over here, we have one larger branch. That's the biggest one in the tree, so that's a no-brainer gets cut out. It gets cut out, and, and num pretty hairy. So yeah, number two. It simplifies things a lot when you do that. Number two, I, I'd take this one out. It's good. Looking at the top, you know, usually, yeah, you kind of usually have a tendency to take one or two in the bottom and one at the top. Yep. And the one at the top is usually not quite as big. Yep. Okay, so there's, is that it? Well, you could okay. columnarize these branches. A little, a little bit. We, we're, we're finding that our mutsus are too big, especially if we pick your own. Um, where, where each customer wants to carry one mutsu out. When you get a group of five people, that's a whole bag of apples right there. So we're, we want to leave a, little, a few more branches in the tree to encourage a little bit smaller mutsu.
and we're not worried about getting red color or anything like blue too. So what about the top? That's our third our top, third rule. We, Where would, do, we would cut back to a side a weak side branch. Just uh, should keep that height down a little bit. Every yep. year you have to work on keeping the height down a little bit. Hopefully you don't have to make big cuts. That the trees are staying relatively calm and you don't have to make big cuts. So notice here where they've made bevel cuts in the past where they've removed some of the bigger branches and we got a nice little shoot coming out here now. Hopefully we'll get this to grow a little more and set some fruit buds. It'll end up right here too, that's good. Those will end up looking like this, presumably in, in a year or two. And that's what you want. You gotta keep renewing this fruiting wood all up and down the axis of the tree. Right? Yep, maybe one more cut here. Yeah, you can, you know, Other than that, you have I to. Would, I would walk away from the tree. So. Probably no more than three big cuts typically yep. ever, unless you didn't prune them in previous years. But you do this every year, it's the same thing. He's been doing this for three or four years now, and these trees look pretty great. So, well, thanks. Thanks, Andre. Um, this is John Clements again for the UMass Video Fruit Advisor, and uh, we'll see you with some more pruning down the road. Take care. We got a lot more trees to prune. You're not doing the squaring part that we get involved. <laughs>